Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome back to today's episode. I've got my special helper, Jason, over there with me, who's coming along with Dad today. We're gonna do a few little chores around the shop as we prepare to get ready for our grand opening, which we still haven't selected the date for yet. Oh, Jason, would you mind grabbing the bag out of the back seat? Yeah. Just the uh, Home Depot bags. I had to pick up a few light bulbs and some other things, but we are going to try and just keep getting things put away. Hopefully in the next day or two here, I'll get my store sign up. And by the end of this episode, we should be geared up, ready to go and prepped for our grand opening. So follow along on today's episode as we take, as we take uh, more steps in the right direction to get this door open. Oh, there's mail. And it's Charlie Brown mail. Somebody in the state sent me Charlie Brown mail. Let's see what this is. It's always a fun day when you get mail. Especially they put nice Charlie Brown stickers all over it. So let's see what they sent us. And this is from uh, Jerry, and your name, last name Jerry Schwem, it looks like. You got it from, uh, looks like you're in Concord, North Carolina. You had a plan, you accepted the challenge, you took the risk. Oh, they sent me a nice little card for my grand opening. Isn't that nice? Alex, Melissa, and the whole crew, if we're ever in the Western U.S., we'll make a point to pop up and visit. Thank you for sharing your adventures with all of us, a fan in North Carolina. Well, that would be really nice to meet you guys, and really nice to see some letters come through today, too. I have to put that out on display. We'll have that up for the grand opening. One of the first things that I picked up today is uh, what Jason is opening up right there. What does it say on the outside? Yeah, it says, moisture garbage. Gar grabbers yeah not well eventually it'll become garbage but right now it's moisture grabbers these are sort of like a, a bag that absorbs water cool. um and humidity we're gonna put them in the basement so that it uh, picks up some of that dampness that was left behind from when uh, the <laughs> i guess the walls had uh leakage so we're gonna go down to the secret hatch i don't think you've been down in the basement before have you it's not super creepy it's less creepy now I'll be right behind you and I'll bring mine down. Do I have to break anything? This was a suggestion from some folks on YouTube land who said that uh, if you get these things, they work wonders. Um, it's like damp rid. We're gonna put some of these up down in the basement. It's essentially like the big silica kind of bags that you'd, well, you'd find them if you buy new shoes or clothing. Sometimes you find a, a little moisture absorbent bag in there. This is like a jumbo version of that. And I'm gonna put them up where the water was getting in. It's probably where I need it the most right now. Still have these on the floor. I found these actually in somebody, they're clearing out a house that had been, uh, well, let's just say well collected over the last years and they were throwing this stuff out. And I said, oh, that's kind of cool. You don't see old medicine bottles still in their boxes. Like this, Buckley's. Hey Jason, you think this tastes as good now? No, it probably tastes the same as it does right now. <laughs> Which is what? You don't like the taste of Buckley's? It, it, it's really well, it works though. This one's from 1940, it's still it's unused. Nice. And I was looking at this. Some medicines have changed. This is still full. You definitely want to make sure you read the labels before you take it, because it can see sugar-coated tablets, chocolate. That all sounds good until you read the ingredients. Oh, aloe and belladonna, sure. And strychnine, well, strychnine is like rat poison. So why on earth would anybody ever prescribe strychnine? No wonder people only lived to be like 30 years old back then. I also like how on these packages, they're not even smiling. Mind you, it's hard to tell if he's smiling or not because of how big that mustache is. <laughs> but they, they always have these serious pictures. But um, yeah, a lot of this is kind of what they'd call like snake oil. Probably doesn't really do much. Um, mind you, some of them is, are still around and being used like uh, cod liver oil, castor oil. Oh, you must have hit a jackpot. While Jason tests out the pinball machine, I have to get this lamp installed. now. You might recall that a video I uh, did last year, I built a uh, Muchos Muertos chandelier. I built a uh, Day of the Dead, sort of like a sugar skull lamp. And it sold, which is great, because that's what you want to have happen. Uh, but then I had lots of other people want one, so I'm building another. Uh, I just have um, one skull I still have to paint, but I'm gonna get this thing in place and ready, light it up, and I'll show you what the grand uh, finale looks like once it's all done. This actually is, is an inverted chandelier. I've attached the anchor point to what would have been the bottom and flipped it, 
um, so that the skulls I have can kind of hang off it like they're the fruit of the skull. Um, picked this one, A, because it was really cheap, um, and also because it had kind of a vine look to it. I think that's neat. So I'm going to uh, secure it in place up here with these uh, quick links and wire it on so it doesn't uh, fall off. And then I'll start mounting the skulls. Go on the bulbs, and we've got these little chandelier bulbs. They're sort of an old-fashioned Edison style. And then what will happen, there's our funky little crystal head vodka bottle that we've turned into a sugar skull. That will go on like that. And I'll wire it on, and then we'll have a whole bunch of them all the way around, and they should light up and be terrifying and cool at the same time. Here these on, basically I'm wrapping wire around, twisting it, running it back through, and giving it sort of these little bunny ears. Uh, and then we're going to use that to twist and tie it on. Okay, we've got our decorated skull lights in place. I just need to do one more to balance it off on the side. You can see it's on a bit of an angle because it's not weighted. But let's turn it on. Oh, there we go. Almost done. Just have to do this one more. Paint this other bottle up and then put it on and... That'd be all good to go. This is also the day that I get to put the sign up. I've got uh, Brenda and Jamie, the people who I bought the place from, they have a really big ladder they're lending me uh, so we can get that thing up there. But the first thing I have to do is measure the sign, find out what the middle is, measure the building, find out where the middle is of that, pre-drill a hole, and then I can put one mounting screw up, get it level, and then in place. Otherwise, it's gonna be offset and look funny. Um, so first thing first, gonna measure the sign. This is essentially just a thin piece of plywood that's been painted. Um, it's maybe a quarter inch, so it's not very heavy, and it is exactly eight feet long, so all I have to do is find the four foot mark, uh, put a little piece of painter's tape on there so I know where my reference point is, pre-drill a hole, and that'll be the first one I anchor it with, and then you pivot it left and right so you get it uh, nice and level. I'm going to mark that off, drill my hole, and uh, measure the building. And the width of the building is just under 23 feet. So I have to go to the nearest inch. If we look at that, that is 271 inches to this board. But what I'm gonna be measuring from up top is gonna to be from that distance. So we're looking at 270 inches across. I'm gonna cut that in half and I'll have my center point. Okay, I've got my center point marked right up there. Once I get the taller ladder, I'll mark it up top too and then I'll be able to get that sign in place. Hopefully. Now that the sign is up, that's one less thing I have to worry about. It's just been a really long process. I guess I'm ready to open. I just have to um, keep plugging away and doing little things uh, every little day to try and uh, move the business forward. And that's what I'm doing today. It's going to be just a matter of days until we officially open the doors. And uh, I had someone knock on the door today who'd been following the channel. I had something really special and they were kind of interested in it. A while back, you might remember that I went to a studio of a Mr. Robert Bailey who painted this amazing work of art for uh, Mr. Peter Jackson, the director. However, he didn't end up taking it and it ended up here in my shop and now you've come today as uh, a member of our armed forces so thank you so much for your service with us thank you uh and you are a collector of things world war one is that correct i am actually uh, i'm kind of a magpie collector i collect just about anything that's shiny but uh, quite frankly uh, anything world war one related and anything robert bailey related i'm, I'm very much into and uh, as i say I, I can't say that i have a a, a, a collection of anything specific but uh, my wife and I uh, have, as I say, been following your channel for some time and uh, have certainly had our eye on uh, on uh, Lord of the Wings there for, for some time. Oh yeah, it's quite the piece. What's your what's your favorite aspect about it? Well, again, I think as we were talking about the uh, the fact that uh, that Robert, uh, you know, incorporated uh, several perspectives in there, not only the perspective of sort of the long range uh, kind of, you know, pastoral kind of, you know, uh, backgrounds there, uh, but the mid range of, uh, of the planes themselves. And then of course, the close up of the, the pilot itself. So it's it's very unique and very distinctive, and uh, I have a few of his uh, his prints, uh, including uh, Unscheduled Arrival, which was one of his first major ones. 
and uh, this uh, this is really quite nice too. It would be a very nice addition to the uh, the collection. Well, yeah, and that's going to be going home with you today. Absolutely. Well, if uh, if we can fit it in the car, anyway. Well, we'll, we'll try. Nice, so. <laughs> well, that's great. I'm so glad you popped in today. Well, thank you for having us. My pleasure. This morning, I've got some errands to run. But you notice I've changed into a bow tie and a shirt. <laughs> well, I was wearing a shirt earlier, but I put the bow tie on. Uh, because I'm giving a speech in a little while at the University of Alberta. I'm giving a lecture, or I guess I'm the guest speaker, and we're talking about running a family business. So I thought, well, heck, I gotta at least dress up a little bit for it. Before I do that, though, I still have actual work to do. Uh, I've gotta go fix the toilet and do other great things. Um, not since the 1900s did somebody fix a toilet in a bow tie, but today's that day. I feel like I have the store in the right neighborhood. Cause look what my neighbor drives. Ba -ba -bum. I would love that van. What a lucky guy. I also got the final sugar skull painted up that I needed. Well, I guess it's my interpretation of a sugar skull, but that's the last one I need for that chandelier. I can put this guy on there and then that'll be done too. Here we go. Last one in place. Probably would not recommend that as a mobile in your kid's nursery, but it is a pretty cool thing. I always imagine it would end up in like a uh, Mexican restaurant or something. Uh, but yeah, we did sell the last one and they put it in their actual home. Um, so you never know where these things are gonna end up. At least I've got one more to sell. Some of you who are watching might also remember this. The stained glass windows that came out of the Potter's house. I didn't have a place to put it at the house. As it turned out, it wasn't a side light for the window as I originally thought, but I do have a spot for it here. To make it work though, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modifications, but I think I have a good spot for it. Not the stained glass window properly. I have to get a little screw eyed for this because um, this is what I'm using <laughs> as I almost drop it. Uh, these are basically like a wooded, uh, wooden screw thread uh, with an eyelid on the end and you can attach a chain to it. I'm gonna mount these at the top of the piece and then I'm gonna mount that to the ceiling and it's gonna hang and hopefully look really amazing and let the light through again. So before I mount these in here, I've marked off eight inches over on both sides so that it hangs nice and even and the holes are in the right spot. So I'm gonna pre-drill a hole so I can start that and not split the wood or create any issue. And you also wanna make sure it's not so deep that it gets into the glass, which it's not, there's lots of room. Two of those should do the trick. Hole pre-drilled, now it's just a matter of hand tightening that, getting that in there. If I need a little bit of leverage, I can use either pliers or you can get uh, kind of a screwdriver in here to help twist it. So I'm gonna get that tightened up all the way so it's good and secure. Okay, and here is the spot that I want to hang it. It's the transom above the side doors, which I'm not really using, but there's a nice spot right there, which is a blank canvas. If I don't put it there, I'm looking out at my neighbor's ugly, well, sorry neighbor, but it's a not very attractive corrugated steel wall. Um, I think it's gonna look much better to have a stained glass window there. Well, I have to measure the distance across, find out the center, and then I know that the uh, screws I put in were 28 inches apart, so then measure those out pre-drill and add hooks in the roof. That's my center point right there. Since I know my screw holes on the stained glass window were 28 inches apart, that means I could measure 14 out on either side. Have marked those. I'm gonna pre-drill a hole and then screw in the eyelets into those ones. Eyelet number one, eyelet number two, they're both in place. Now to attach a chain link to the stained glass window and try and hang it. The chain link that I'm using uh, is actually, I'm using something called a quick link. This is a chain link that has two threaded portions on it with uh, a little nut attached. Um, kind of like my wife. <laughs> I'm like the nut in her life that she puts up with. But in this case, we're using this nut to hang up the stained glass window. So you hook it on, you tighten it back up with the thread and you've got a nice sturdy connection. I'm gonna add these to the stained glass window first and then hoist that thing into place and uh, tighten it up once it's up there. had what they say a bit of a screw up. The chain link that I put in was a little bit long. The eyelets, I need to use heavy duty eyelets so I don't want that thing falling. So I've had to resort to being crafty and I went to my old toolbox to find some bits and pieces to use and put a center bolt through the two um, eyelets instead of putting another chain link in there. I think that should do the trick. Awfully glad that I put those eyelets in the exact right spot, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to put a bolt directly through. Now, it's not the exact same size as the transom, but that's okay. It's just a decorative piece and it gets it off the floor. Well, I think it looks all right. But enough with the store for right now because I have to go to the university. I have to be there in about 45 minutes to uh, give a talk. 
and uh, yeah, don't want to be late for this. This is kind of usually how my days go. There's a ton of stuff to do and it never seems like there's enough time. In this case, I realized as I'm driving to the university that I forgot to eat. I didn't have breakfast or lunch. Uh, probably why I get these dark circles under my eyes. So I'm not drinking enough water, but it's just go, go, go. I get up and I feel like I'm motivated to go and get stuff done. Uh, but I really do need to get a quick bite somewhere else. I'm gonna be hangry. And you don't wanna have somebody who's uh, hungry <laughs> giving a speech to some students is all I'll be thinking about is eating food. So uh, hopefully I'll have enough time when I get there to do that. I really gotta start taking better care of myself in that regard. On campus, got parking. Now to find the School of Business here, which I think is in this general direction. If I can't find that, I shouldn't be speaking today. I think I've found it. School of Business in front of me here. You know, one thing, it's been a few years since I've been a student at university, but uh, I can tell you this, I'm probably not the only bow tie on campus today. Um, Alex, it's all yours. Okay, great. Hey guys. Nice to have an introduction like that. Um, so I guess the first thing I'm going to ask, are any of you guys currently, do you own your own business or are you part of a family business right now? The spa? Okay, nice. <laughs> Some nice benefits of having a family with a spa. Whatever a person's reasons are for, for taking a business class, whether it's to fine tune your skills or, you know, you're looking at starting a business. Um, I ended up being in a position where I've been an entrepreneur twice now. So I owned a toy store with my family at West Hampton Mall for five years. Now we have an antique shop. But as uh, Bruce was saying, we also do a YouTube channel too. So I guess there's kind of that, there's running the business and then there's the social media entity. Most people who are entrepreneurs are passionate about something or they have a learned skill from someone else. Like maybe you've learned some of your recipes from your family and that's been passed down through the Nigerian catering. Maybe your family is a spa. You're like, we just need access to spa time, like all the time. <laughs> and they're like, we need a spa. Whatever the reasons are that you end up being in a business, usually it's because there's some connection or some passion for doing it. And I think if you're an entrepreneur, you, you know that you have, you want to provide and do something different that other people aren't doing. And you want to be inspired. You just want to show up and complete your task every day and go home. It kind of doesn't feel super exciting. <laughs> and where I was at with work is that although it was going well and it was a really great paying job, I felt like my job was just to go in, complete a task and go home. You know, you take your breaks on time, you take your lunch break, and it was the same thing day after day after day, and I felt like I was capable of being more interesting. I felt like there was more to this life. So a lot of people say, like, how you compete with the internet. You can go online and you can find things online. Why would, why would somebody care to go in your store? And it all comes down to uh, humans are emotional. People are emotional, and you can't take that out of it. You, try, you have to have a little bit of showmanship. You have to have a little bit of um, finesse to make your environment something really special. When you build a business, you're building a product. You can't be uh, adverse to taking risks in this business. And you have to be prepared for failure and you have to be prepared for change. So now I'm basically at this spot where we've got this store. I'm doing another grand opening in about a week's time. So that's gave me time to come here and talk to you guys today. I guess as I look forward to the future of this business, we have the city that wants to bring tour buses through now, so I have to think about what that's gonna look like. You know, teach my staff to read a script about talking about the history of the building and so it's a whole world of different changes that we're going into. And when you get into a new environment, you have to look at different products. But if you guys have any questions you want to ask, if I can be of any help to you at all, I'd be happy to take any questions and try and answer them for you. Yeah, is it Matthew? Well, that's it. It's hard to say how things went. I think they probably went pretty well. Um, they were engaged bunch asking lots of questions. I hope that in some way I could help inspire them to live their dreams and to do what they want to do and help them with their businesses. So a great way to end my day here today that said, the next thing I have to do is go home and fix the toilet. So, uh, <laughs> not quite as glamorous. There it is. This is probably less exciting, <laughs> but that attaches the chain. That's what lets the water out into your bowl. Our old one had uh, calcium deposits on it, which was creating um, a running situation. If you ever have a toilet that just runs on occasionally and stops, that's usually the, the case. You just need to replace that rubber flap. So yeah, that was that. That's one thing done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's approaching mid-October, and so far we've not had any snow, but it's going to be pretty soon. We got lucky. As you can see on the hood of the car, we had heavy rain last night, and that could very easily have turned to snow. And I'm actually worried um, when the weather starts to drop because I still don't have 
the fireplace, uh, or the stove, I should say, installed in the back room, which is gonna be the primary source of heat in that addition that we renovated. That said, they called me and said they might have a guy available to do the install today. Let's hope that he does, because any day now, we're gonna start to see the weather shift on us, and um, you know that's what we're gonna need the heat the most. And today's special guest, Patrick. Patrick is helping me out today by getting the guitars tuned, but this amp is giving us a little bit of grief. It's got power. Maybe it's maybe it is the cable or something. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, so Patrick knows guitars inside and out, and he's gonna go through these guys and tune them up for me today. But I guess we gotta get a working amp first. It's either the guitar or quarter amp. We'll come back to that. I have to fill in this space above here because um, that Robert Bailey painting went the other day. And uh, what I did is I went and got a bunch more of these um, rock posters framed. So we're going to hang those instead. Well, Patrick got the amp and guitar figured out back there. And I had another visitor come by, Mr. Barry Bailey from Bailey's Books, has come over to visit us because I had a wall of autographed books. I'm not really in the book selling business, but he is. <laughs> You're not wearing your, your Bailey book shirt. No, no, not He's today. Bailey the book it's too fan. too cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had a whole bunch of signed and autographed editions. I pretty well just wholesaled those out because I need the shelf space for other things that are going to be coming in. I'm going to see other states. I need stuff, and that's going to be inventory for you. Absolutely. This, uh, there's some really uh, uh, interesting books in here, uh, mostly Canadiana stuff, and it's all signed, which I specialize in. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is an excellent arrangement for both of us, I think. That's right. It's going to a good home. <laughs> Absolutely. The other thing I've been trying to figure out what to do with is this, my canoe lamp. Now, it adds a lot of extra character to the space. I mean, we had it up in the old store, and everybody loved it. But it's so darn big. I've been debating whether to put it up, but I think I'm going to try. I think I'm going to try and find a home for it. The canoe is 14 feet long. It's likely made by Peterborough out of Ontario, but it was a canvas sided canoe. It's missing the canvas now, so we turned it into a light a while ago. Uh, what I have to do is measure up in the ceiling where it's gonna go. Um, I know that the two brackets that I have that hold it up are four feet apart, so I need my holes to be four feet apart to dangle the chain from there. It's just a matter of measuring, marking, and uh, they say measure twice and cut once, so this is measure two or three times at least, and then you put your holes in the ceiling. I have measured and marked. I've got two little dots on the ceiling that you see there. That's where the hooks are gonna go in that will hold said canoe. Um, I'm gonna get the hooks mounted first and then attach the chain to the canoe and then get that thing in place. There we have it, one canoe delir, chandelier, one canoe chandelier is in place above my cash wrap and yes, I do like it. So I'm happy that I put it back up. It gives it character and it gives a really great glow to my cash area here. So when people come by, those pennies just sparkle like a shiny new penny, which some of them are. And um, it's gonna give us some good light when we're looking at objects and checking things over. But I found something cool that I didn't know I had. In fact, I forgot I had. I found this little slot car that we picked up in uh, Prince Edward Island. And look, it's my car, except it's the two-door version. But look at that, perspective. Ooh, but I, now I have a little toy version of my car. Cool. And the other good news is that the uh, install guys are here to put the little, uh, gas stove in place, which is gonna sit right there. I've given them instructions, I'm gonna let them do their thing, but hopefully, before long, we'll have a little extra heat in this back room, just in the nick of time, too. Install progress report. So far, they've cut a big peaky hole <laughs> with that saw, and I don't know where they are. I'm assuming that thing is gonna go on there, and maybe they're outside, getting the stuff out of the truck. This thing only takes about an hour or so to install this. Um, well, that's looking a lot better. They've got the fireplace yeah, in place. Okay, they've got the gas line teed off here, going into the unit. It's 
pr probably pretty handy for them that I decided to put it right next to an existing gas line. Uh, we needed an electrical outlet for the fan, which is right there. And uh, they basically just painted this all um, matte black. They've taped it off and painted it so it looks more old fashioned. And it's gonna do a nice job of matching uh, the, <laughs> the stove. It'll be really good to have the extra heat in this back room. And once that's taken down, you can kind of see the five roses flower sign that had been used for this purpose probably a hundred years ago is going right back to use doing what it was meant to do. There we go, one nice cozy little fireplace. I can hang some other pictures around it, but that should keep this room nice and toasty. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode. We got a lot accomplished. The chandelier canoe, canoodleer is up. We've got the stained glass window in place. We got the fireplace up and working. A lot done, I would say. Fingers not crossed even. I don't have to cross my fingers. I know that we're ready. We're ready to open. It's just a matter of waiting for that business license now and I can open the doors. So a few little details like pricing and I'm gonna be good to go. So you guys have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you all soon and bye for now.